Okay, so let's have a look at <coughs> this curve. Y equals 1 sixth x cubed minus a half x squared plus x. Now a typical year 13 question might say to you, um, check to see if this curve has got any stationary points, check to see if it's got any inflection points, because remember, inflection points may be present which are not stationary points. Um, identify the nature of all these points and then sketch the picture. Right, so if I want to check if it's got stationary points, first of all, I'll work out dy by dx. If you work out dy by dx, 3 to the front, you get 3 over 6, which is a half. So you're going to get a half x squared. Uh, minus 2 to the front, you get a half times the 2, you get 1. 1 times the x, you just get x. And then you've got plus, that's 1x. If you differentiate it, you get plus 1. And it's equal to naught if it's got stationary points. So this is a little equation that pops out, which will give us the x values where you've got stationary points. OK. This is a quadratic equation, so potentially two answers. I'm going to get rid of the half by doubling that. So double that and double that equals naught. This is a quadratic equation. Well, you can try factorising that, but you'll find it doesn't factorise. You can try working out the quadratic formula on it, but you're going to find yourself with a problem. Because the discriminant, which is, if you remember, b squared minus 4ac, will be equal to, well, if you take minus 2, which is the b value, and square it, you're going to get minus 2. If you square it, you get 4. Minus 4, lots of a. Well, a is the number of x squared, which is 1, times c, which is 2. You end up with 4, take away 8, negative 4. It's negative. Now, the b squared minus 4ac discriminant value, if you remember, is the thing in the quadratic formula which will be inside the square root. Because remember, the quadratic formula is minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. So you get the square root of a negative number. So you know that b squared minus 4ac, the discriminant, is negative, which is less than 0. So what does that mean? If you remember your work on discriminants, there are no real solutions. So that means there are no x values on this curve which give rise to stationary points. So there are no stationary points on this curve at all. Right, OK. So the end of the question then. Well, no, because it did say, can you please analyse inflection points as well? And inflection points, remember, do not have to be stationary points. So inflection points could be something like that, for example, where there is no gradient of zero at the point of inflection itself. So what we're going to do is work now on the second derivative, because if you remember, it is true to say that if you work out d2y by dx squared and you get the answer to be equal to be naught, then it's possible that it could be a point of inflection. It's the ambiguous case, remember. So we're going to work out the second derivative. So we go back to the first derivative, which is that, and we differentiate again. 2 to the front, power goes down by 1. This will give you 2 times the half is 1, x to the 1. So we just get x to the 1. Take away, differentiate x, you get 1, and then you differentiate the 1 there, you get nothing. So x minus 1 is the second derivative. Now, that must equal 0 if we do have any points of inflection at points of inflection. So that's a statement we make. So this is now a nice, easy little equation, which is a linear equation. So x equals 1 is the solution to that. So there is potentially a point of inflection, potentially, because remember the ambiguity situation, potentially a point of in inflection at x equals 1. OK, so x equals 1. Let's work out the y value to go with it. So y will be, from up here, 1 in there, 1 in there, 1 in there. So that's 1 sixth times 1 cubed, that's 1 sixth. Take away a half times 1 squared, that's just a half, plus 1. And if you work out this out, 1 sixth take away 3 sixth, that's minus 2 sixth, plus 6 sixth, 
that's four sixths or two thirds. So the point we're talking about is one comma two thirds. And that is a potential point of inflection. It could be a point of inflection. Now let's just double check whether it's a point of inflection because if it's a point of inflection looking like that, the gradient will go positive and then positive again, either side of the x equals one value. So let's just double check that. Okay, so I'm gonna work out now dy by dx values when x equals 0 0.9, which is a slightly smaller value than that. And I'm also gonna work out dy by dx when x equals 1.1, which is a slightly bigger x value than that. So I'm working out the gradients in the region of x equals 1, which is the potential point of inflection I'm talking about. And I'm now going to work out dy by dx, which will be equal to, let's go back to the expression, a half x squared, a half of 0.9 in a bracket squared, take away x, take away 0.9 plus 1. Well, if you work your way through that, it can only be a positive answer. It doesn't matter on the magnitude. Let's look at x equals 1.1. dy by dx, I'll shift it up a bit, will be a half of 1.1 squared, a half of 1.1 squared, take away x, take away 1.1 plus 1. If you work your way through that, again, that can only work out, you can work it out with a calculator if you want, to be a positive value. So what we've got here is a positive, positive scenario, which is similar to the diagram I showed you up here. So we do have a point of inflection at one, two thirds, but it's not a stationary point. So I'm now in the position where I can do a sketch of the situation, one, two thirds, one across, two thirds up, there is the inflection point. There are no stationary points at all, remember? And there's only one inflection point at one, two thirds, which we've shown it's an inflection point, which looks like that. So the diagram is going to look in the region um, of an inflection point doing this sort of thing, like that. Now one further point, it might be worth your while in this sketch just to confirm where does this curve cross the y-axis, for example. Where does this curve cross the y-axis? Because if it crosses at a negative 1, it would go down here. If it crosses at naught, it would pass through there. If it crosses at a positive, it would cross through up here. So it crosses y-axis when x equals naught in the original name of the curve in the original equation. So crosses the y-axis when x is naught. That's naught, that's naught, that's naught. So y would equal naught. So it crosses the, let me move this up. It crosses the y-axis at y equals naught. So it crosses the y-axis there. So I know the picture now looks like this. There's the point of inflection and it passes through there and goes on like that. And that point of inflection, I'll record it as 1, 2 thirds, and it's not a stationary point. And that's it. There are no other stationary points or points of inflection on that curve. That's the end of this typical year 13 question.